Are there other planets like Earth? Are they common? Do they have signs of life? These are really big questions, and we're sort of slowly unveiling uh, the curtain and finding these answers, and we're sort of at a lucky generation to be able to see this. Greetings, fellow cosmic explorers. Today, we're embarking on a mind-blowing journey through the cosmos to uncover the incredible world of exoplanets, those distant celestial bodies beyond our solar system. Did you know there are over 5,000 confirmed exoplanets in our galaxy? But hold on to your seats because that number will skyrocket in the next decade. The Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS, has already discovered more than 4,000 candidate exoplanets, and the Planetary Transits and Oscillations of Stars, or PLATO, is gearing up for launch in 2026. This means we're on the brink of having over 10,000 worlds where life might be able to survive. It's an awe-inspiring thought, but with so many exoplanets out there, how do we even begin to search for life on them? Well, NASA scientists have some ingenious strategies up their sleeves, and you're about to learn all about them. First of all, what is an exoplanet? The short answer. All the planets that orbit around a star are called exoplanets. They are quite hard to be seen with a telescope due to the bright glare that's coming from the star they orbit. So instead, astronomers have found a way to intercept them by looking at the effects these planets have on the star they orbit. For example, one way to search for exoplanets is to look for wobbly stars. A star that has planets doesn't orbit perfectly around its center. From far away, this off-center orbit makes the star look like it's wobbling. Hundreds of planets have been discovered using this method. However, only big planets, like Jupiter or even larger, can be seen this way. Smaller Earth-like planets are much harder to find because they create only small wobbles that are hard to detect, but we'll talk about their classification later in the video. For now, let's see how exoplanets are discovered. In 2009, NASA launched the Kepler spacecraft on a mission to discover exoplanets. Kepler's mission included searching for planets of various sizes and orbital patterns, orbiting stars with diverse characteristics. Kepler identified rocky exoplanets positioned within a unique range from their host stars, known as the habitable zone where conditions might support life. This spacecraft used the transit method to detect these exoplanets. During a transit, a planet passes in front of its star, temporarily reducing the star's brightness. Astronomers observed these changes in brightness during transits to determine the planet's size and calculate its distance from the star, which provided insights into the planet's potential temperature and habitability. The quest for intelligence beyond Earth has long centered around assuming that extraterrestrials would communicate using radio technology much like ours, but times have changed. Nowadays, scientists are more agnostic in their approach. Instead of listening for direct calls, telescopes scan the sky, sifting through billions of frequencies simultaneously in search of electronic signals that can't be explained by natural phenomena. Well, I think these pictures are spectacular. They're breathtaking. And they realize, you realize there's a whole universe out there that we have not seen, even with the Hubble Space Telescope. With the help of advanced technology, these remarkable worlds, the exoplanets, have been categorized by scientists into several distinct types. The first category is the gas giant. These behemoths can be larger than even our mighty Jupiter. Composed primarily of gases like hydrogen and helium, with no solid surface to speak of. Then there are the Neptunian planets. Named after our own Neptune, these are often referred to as mini-gas giants, sharing some characteristics with their larger counterparts. Moving on, we have the Super-Earths. These are rocky planets, similar to our Earth, but with a significantly greater mass. They can be found in a range of sizes and compositions. Last but not least, we encounter the terrestrial planets. These are rocky, solid planets like Earth and Mars. They may have surfaces with mountains, valleys, and oceans, making them potentially suitable for life as we know it. 
But what makes exoplanets truly fascinating is their astounding diversity in size and environmental conditions. They can range from gas giants dwarfing Jupiter to small rocky planets, similar in size to Earth or Mars. Some of these worlds are scorching hot enough to melt metal, while others are locked in an icy deep freeze. Their orbits around their host stars can be mind-bogglingly fast, with a year lasting only a few Earth days. Some even have the extraordinary distinction of orbiting not one, but two suns. And then there are the sunless rogues, planets adrift in the galaxy, forever shrouded in darkness as they wander through the cosmic expanse. However, it's essential to note that most of the exoplanets we've discovered so far reside within a relatively small region of our galaxy, the Milky Way. When we say small, we mean within thousands of light years of our solar system. To put that in perspective, one light year is equivalent to a staggering 5.88 trillion miles or 9.46 trillion kilometers. It's crucial to remember that our understanding of exoplanets has been greatly expanded thanks to NASA's Kepler Space Telescope. Kepler revealed a profound revelation. There are thought to be more planets in our galaxy than there are stars, a cosmic census that has left scientists and astronomers in awe. As we gaze into the distant cosmos, we've even uncovered a tantalizing neighbor just a few years ago. Proxima Centauri, our nearest neighboring star, was found to have at least one planet in its company, and we are on our way to search for any form of life out there. The universe is likely teeming with alien worlds that are waiting to be discovered. And just a few years ago, scientists made one of the most exciting exoplanet discoveries so far. A rocky planet, similar in size to Earth, orbiting within the habitable zone of the closest star to the Sun, Proxima Centauri. But here's the catch. Proxima Centauri and its companion planet are about 4 light years away. That's a staggering distance, over 25 trillion miles or 40 trillion kilometers. And while we've made incredible strides in discovering exoplanets, the majority of them remain hundreds or even thousands of light years away. But what exactly is life beyond Earth? The biggest question comes with a twist. We don't have a universally accepted definition of life itself, so what do we do? We shift our focus to detecting telltale signs of life in exoplanet atmospheres. The James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, launched in 2021, could give us the first glimpses. By studying the mix of gases in Earth-sized exoplanet atmospheres, we might find oxygen carbon dioxide, methane, signs of a possible Earth-like atmosphere, and maybe, just maybe, life. This telescope, the Webb, is a hundred times more powerful than the Hubble Space Telescope. Wow. So when you look at the entire picture, you're looking at literally a trillion stars. This is incredible. In the future, telescopes might even reveal hints of photosynthesis, or gases suggesting animal life. Though we might never be certain, an exoplanet with a 95% probability of life would be groundbreaking. Scientists like MIT's Sara Seeger explore chemical combinations that could signal alien life. They focus on the key elements associated with life on Earth, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur, and hydrogen. To narrow the search for habitable worlds, scientists use a concept called the habitable zone. Imagine a distant star at the center of its own cosmic show. The habitable zone, also known as the Goldilocks zone, is a region encircling this star. It's the perfect orbital distance where temperatures are just right, not too hot or too cold, allowing liquid water to potentially exist on a planet's surface. The habitable zone, it's a good construct, the Goldilocks zone. It helps us think of where we should be looking for planets. But in reality, I think it really depends on the individual planet. Like, I want you to imagine a planet that instead of having an atmosphere like ours that is mostly nitrogen and it has a good amount of oxygen, imagine a planet that has a hydrogen atmosphere dominated by hydrogen. Now, it's not just about the distance from the star to create the ideal conditions for life, Many other factors come into play. First, the planet must be of the right size. Too small and it might not have the gravity to hold on to its atmosphere. Too big and it could become a gas giant like Jupiter. 
Next, the planet needs a suitable atmosphere, one that can trap enough heat to maintain stable temperatures. An atmosphere also protects against harmful cosmic radiation. And let's not forget about the star itself. A stable, long-lived star is essential. Stars that frequently erupt in sterilizing flares could make it impossible for life to thrive on any nearby planet. So, you see, the habitable zone isn't just a single line in space. It's a complex set of conditions that need to align perfectly for a planet to have a shot at hosting life. But remember, it's not just about distance. Other factors like atmosphere and a stable star play crucial roles in creating habitable conditions. So, there you have it, cosmic explorers. The search for life beyond our planet is advancing at a breathtaking pace. And with every discovery, we're getting closer to answering that age-old question. Is there life beyond Earth? The future is promising, and while we may not have all the answers yet, we're making significant strides in our quest for extraterrestrial life. If you're as fascinated as we are by the mysteries of the universe and the hunt for life beyond Earth, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. Join us on this cosmic journey as we continue to explore the depths of space and unveil the secrets of the cosmos. Until next time, keep gazing at the stars, and if you like, Make a wish, work for it, and I promise it will happen.